We've got Michigan in Champaign. We've got Northwestern's last game on the lake. And we've got Rutgers hosting another one of those poor, poor West Coast schools all the way in New Jersey. Big Ten breakfast is now served. Welcome back to Big Ten Breakfast, the Big Ten preview show that's part preview, but also part Yelp review. On today's episode, we're going back to Frida's in Evanston. Dan, you and I were there way yeah. back when. It is in honor of Northwestern's final game this season in its portable stadium on the lake. Yes, absolutely. And Frida's is just a go-to choice for me in downtown Evanston. Let's stick, though, Ty. Before we indulge with some crispy, spicy brunch, let's stick with a breakfast theme. And we're going breakfast drinks with a game of juice or jolt. Juice or jolt. Juice or jolt. We're about halfway through the season. I'm going to give you a Big Ten team. You can talk about this week's game. You can talk about the back half of their schedule. Whatever you want. Does this team have the juice? already to keep going maybe some orange juice grapefruit juice whatever your juice of choice or do they need that jolt whether it's coffee whether it's strong black tea like you prefer whether it's something illegal that you're pouring under the tape whatever you need to get your daily jolt going whatever it takes whatever it takes for you yeah do these teams need a jolt or do they already have that juice let's start with nebraska ahead of Maybe the game of the week, probably the game of the week, depending on who you ask within the conference. Traveling to Indiana, Nebraska, very strong defense. Maybe an uneven offense. Schedule's about to get harder, especially when you look at the back half. Does Nebraska have that juice, or do they need a little jolt? I think they need a little jolt. Okay. A little bit of a jolt. They've got the defense. You're right about that. I feel good about the defense. The defense is absolutely going to keep them in every game that they're playing okay. the rest of the way, to some extent where they need the jolts on offense because there's been a lot of hype around Dylan Raiola. Certainly the offense is better by leaps and bounds than it was a year ago. But if you pop the hood, if you look at some of the numbers, there are some, you know, nerd stats, the efficiency <laughs> stuff that leaves me feeling a bit wanting for more. So there's definitely room for improvement there. And I think as the schedule toughens up, they're going to need to get more out of that offense than we have seen this week in particular against Indiana is going to give us a pretty good indication of where India or where Nebraska's offense is at, excuse me, because they're probably going to need to score to keep up with the Hoosiers. I think you're right, though. I think I'm just going to say juice because what we've seen from them already is winning losable games, right? When you look at what they did against Purdue with the super slow start, but turn it on late, what they did against Rutgers and holding on, that's a game they lose last year. That's a game they lose two, three years ago. And so what I think is they have the juice to keep doing what they're doing. Do they need a jolt to win the conference? Yes, but Jeremiah Smith and Ryan Williams aren't transferring and suiting up for Nebraska midseason. They're not, you know, taking in the Texas offensive line and putting them in red and white. And like they're just there's I don't think there's any juice to be squeezed from a jolt, if that makes any sense. Well, and I'm not talking about a full on glass of coffee. Sure. Cup of coffee. I'm talking about one of those little like espresso shots. Sure, a little sipsy. A little yeah. Americana, just something to kind of get the juices more flowing because I think they're close and certainly compared to last year, they're in a much, much better place. If you're a Nebraska fan, you've got to be thrilled by the progress you've seen in just one year. Yeah. But I just, I feel like we're going to need to see more from that offense. Maybe this week we'll give them an opportunity to put it on display. Yeah, that's true. I just think, I think they're maximized. I think they're maximizing yeah. what they have in this moment. The, six, the season already seems like a success, 5-1 and one at the moment, if memory serves, with a couple impressive wins. The loss to a respectable, obviously, is a respectable loss to Illinois. I'm going to say they have the juice to keep doing what they're okay. doing. I just don't know how much jolt there is left in them. All Fair right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Next team, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Seemingly needing a jolt, starting off, obviously key injuries, getting destroyed by Alabama, slow start, but seems to have some juice these last couple weeks. What do you think? <laughs> Three weeks running, it feels to me like Wisconsin's got some juice. Obviously, the last two games against Rutgers and Purdue, they won those games going away. Taking some strays here, by the way. Both of these teams, Rutgers and Purdue, yeah. They, they kind of are. But going back even to that USC game, Wisconsin led in that game. Second half wasn't great, but they came out and it seemed as if they were primed to win that football game. Now, moving forward, it does get tougher. They've got Penn State. They've got Iowa. They've got Oregon. Oregon they've yeah. got the aforementioned Nebraska Cornhuskers on the schedule. So it's it's not going to be easy moving forward. But 
I say juice because they lost Tyler Van Dyke, TVD. The offense was in a state of flux. What is this going to look like? Is it going to be a redux from what we saw a year ago? And based on what I've seen these last two weeks, it looks much improved. It seems as if they're playing with some momentum. And I do wonder if going into some of these games, they're able to give a team like Iowa a bit of a game. If they're right. able to give your Oregon Ducks a bit of a game as they come into Madison, even Penn State, Penn State a week before, um, you know, a big game against right. Ohio State. So it, it's interesting to me where we find Wisconsin at present. This is not to say Wisconsin is going on to win the Big Ten or anything crazy, but I do think as compared to what I thought after losing TVD, they're in a much, much better place than expected. So good on them. I think they need a jolt, and I think maybe we're in the beginning of a jolt. I just haven't seen it against anybody of substance in this moment. And so you mentioned the superpowers on the back half of their schedule. I November is going to be very tough, but if they can get a jolt in, in the form of, let's say, vision, identity, something from the coaches, this is who we are. This is the youth we're going to start playing more. These are the shots we're going to continue to take downfield. I don't think they have the juice yet, but I think with a slight jolt of just identity and like this is our plan this is who we are these last six weeks i think they can become significantly scarier whatever that means within the context of this roster but right now they've played alabama they lost by 30 dealing with an injury but i don't know the back half of that usc game i still think they need a maybe they're my espresso team right Fair now enough. we're gonna stick with reddish big 10 teams usc <laughs> a team that's had an uneven season i think they're three and three at the time of recording they're traveling across the country. Speaking of teams with advent advantageous geography, I guess, in Maryland, um, USC, do they need that jolt of something extra for the back half of this schedule? Or are they just sort of what they are under Lincoln Riley? And they've got certain amounts of juice. I think they've got enough juice. Okay. I really do. And I suspect you're going to disagree with me on this point, but USC has not exactly gotten blown out against some of these better teams that they True. have played on their schedule. They were probably a few tackles away from beating Michigan. The Penn State game went to overtime, maybe some questionable. You sound like management. Lincoln Riley right now, by the way, who is always well, like, we're five points away from being 6-0. Like, and okay. I don't feel like USC is that bad of a team. They're, okay, They're certainly flawed, but I, I think at least defensively, they're better than they were a year ago. Um, they beat LSU, which is proving week by week to be a better win than I think we even thought in the moment. So my point is, as you look at this schedule, yes, they're traveling cross country this week to square off against Maryland team that I think is pretty flawed in its own right. Rutgers at home, they travel to Washington. They've got Nebraska, UCLA, and Notre Dame. The only team that's really jumping off the page at me in that final stretch of six is Notre Dame. That's a rivalry and it's at home and they stand a chance to maybe knock the Irish out of the playoffs. So I still think this is a pretty good team. I think they've got more juice this year than I can remember in a while running the football. Yeah. I really like Woody Marks. I think this is a solid team. I am not inclined to say that they need any kind of jolt beyond what they already have. I think they've got juice. I just don't think skeptics like you have fully recognized it yet. Here's the good news about USC right now, midway through the season. Correct me if I'm wrong. No Indiana, no Oregon, no Ohio State. There are three undefeated teams. Those are the, the top-tier teams right now, just by record in the conference. USC doesn't play any of them. Right. And they That's already right. played against Michigan and Michigan's defense on the road, a tough spot. So the good news for USC is, schedule-wise, they're okay. If they need a little bit of a jolt, it's in thinking about what their offense actually is and what their offense actually can do. Because you're right, they were in these games. They were in the game against Minnesota. They were in the game against Michigan. They were in the game against Penn State with opportunities to close those games out. What I think they're doing is thinking about offense incorrectly given their offensive line struggles. What The strength of this offense have been has we thought it was going to be the group of receivers. It's not. It's Quinton Joyner and Woody Marks. Right, yeah. that their versatility, their ability to generate bigger plays, and they've been a little bit mistake prone at times. But really, if USC can think about its offense as a running offense and a creative running offense, if that's where all of Lincoln Riley's brain power can go, if we, if we can give him that jolt, it can cover up for a defense that you know they lose their best linebacker, Eric Gentry's red shirting, Anthony Lucas out for the season, Bear Alexander red shirting and leaving, so they're thinner up front but improved. 
if USC can buy themselves time, control the ball a little bit more, they're never going to be like a, a straightforward power rushing team. No, no, But no. play with the edges. Play with the screen game. Take some pressure off of Miller Moss because just dropping him back is going to get him murdered. Yeah. It's no, not I, the answer. And so if they can sort of shift identity a little bit in a creative way, I'm not smart enough to do it, but you're playing Lincoln Riley $10 million USC. Kindly ask him to lean into the strengths of this team if you want to, I don't know, go above 500 this year. I just think that it would be a much different conversation if we watched the Penn State game, we watched the Michigan game, yeah, and we came into this discussion saying, wow, they didn't look like they even belonged on the field. Right. There would have been moments over the last two seasons, especially with where that defense was at, where I can very easily envision a world in which we would have said that. That was not the case right. in either of those games. They absolutely held their own. They were very, very close to winning those games. And I know it's a result, a results-based business. Yeah. It almost doesn't count. But I did not come away from any of those games feeling like USC was too overmatched. So it'll be interesting to see what they look like the rest of the way through, in particular that Notre Dame game by the end of the season because they've got a couple of weeks now to get their house in order to maybe develop a little bit more of an identity around that ground game before Notre Dame comes to town. But how do you, how do you close out those close games, Ty? You got to run the ball. Gotta how, run do you, the ball. how do you how do you find yourself on the eight yard line, the seventeen yard line, whatever, and turn it into six and not three? Turn yourself into your inner Trevor Hoffman if you're Lincoln Riley. Close these out emphatically on the ground. If I possible. don't think I don't think they need the jolt. I think they have the juice that mm. they need, but maybe they need to purify it a little bit more before we're ready. Yeah, I think we time. can let's FaceTime Miller Moss and ask him about the protection against Penn State in that fourth quarter in overtime. <laughs> a lot of he a said, lot of pulp. A lot of pulp in that juice. Yeah. <laughs> we might need a little jolt there. Okay. Yeah. Next team. Juice jolts. Juicy Iowa. <laughs> Iowa. Ty, they just dropped 40 yeah. on a team that was in the national championship last year. Finished product. Iowa 2027 20, national champs. Dan, we, we've been talking about Iowa needing a jolt now for almost as long as you and I have been in the podcasting business. Yes. This is just who Iowa is. So I'm, I'm not even going to go there by saying they need a jolt. They need better offense. They, need, they know exactly who they are. They run the ball with Caleb Johnson. They have gotten a little bit more efficient in terms of throwing the football. They are now scoring 40 points in games, which is definitely a foreign concept. Yes. We know the defense is there. Iowa is as finished a product as we are going to see full stop. Do you want to hear the offenses left on Ohio's, excuse me, on Iowa's schedule? Yeah, go ahead. Here are the following offenses. Yep. Michigan State, Northwestern, Wisconsin, maybe improved, UCLA, awful, Maryland, dip in quickly, and Nebraska, which disappears for entire halves at a time. Iowa is C. It's not juice. It's not jolt. They're just full fat milk, right? Yeah, they're they're ready. They're, they're creamy ready. and filling, Ty. They're ten and two. They are a ten and two team. They're ten and two, a nine and three team at worst at this yes. point. And you know what? That's damn successful. It yeah. doesn't always need to be pretty, but there has been incremental improvements. Remember, we talked about this all off season. Incremental. Improvements. Mm -hmm. Just incremental improvements. You keep the defense where it's at. You make small steps offensively to make things a little bit better. And, you know, we'll see if the entire product improves. I think we're there. I think they have made some incremental improvements. It doesn't always need to be sexy, but Iowa is what it is. They're very confident in being that exact identity of a team. And they're going to finish 10 and 2. That's it. Illinois. I think Illinois needs a jolt. Okay. In what way? I watched Illinois intently in that Penn State game. I was curious to see which version of Luke Altmaier of the offense, of the defense we would see. Because we're now watching a ranked Illinois team. We're watching yes. a ranked so Illinois the, team. The context of Illinois is specific. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, in watching them against Penn State, it did not feel like that was much of an even contest. Some of what we saw on the Penn State side left a bit to be desired. But my takeaway coming out of that game was that it was not as close as a 21 to seven score made it appear. It felt to me like that was a mismatch. So just speaking anecdotally, having watched that game, having felt the vibes of that game, my takeaway was they need a little bit more of a jolt if they're going to go into this remainder of its Big Ten schedule and have the same success that we saw on the front side. That being said, yeah, Michigan this week, mm -hmm. the game is at home. 
We could definitely debate the merits of whether Michigan needs juice or has juice or needs a Joel. <laughs> yeah. Right. So th this is not a creative way of saying that they are definitely losing the game this weekend against Michigan. That point spread is only about three in favor of the Wolverines. I could absolutely see Illinois winning that football game. But I would say bigger picture, if I zoom out, look at the schedule, I would like to see a little bit more of a jolt offensively. Offensively for the Illinois Fighting Illini. Um, I would like to see more consistency against better defenses before I'm ready to feel more confident about their chances. Fair enough. And to be fair, they were it was 14-7 against Penn State late. And I know you'll say like it never felt like that was a score, but maybe that's a 14-all game. Maybe that's Look, a 17-14 game with the juice you, you think they need, right? He, listen, vibes aren't a stat. I okay. understand. Vi vibes aren't a stat. I, I am speaking solely as a fan, as somebody who went to Penn State. You can see yeah, the signs yeah. behind me. Right. Somebody who watched this game very closely and kind of went through that emotional experience. To me, it did not feel like that game was as close as the final scoreboard would indicate. Right. OK, fair enough. Um, see, I don't think I think they need a little bit of juice, but I think it's on the other side of the ball. I think they've come to a nice place on offense. I think Luke Altmaier, despite playing behind or in front, whatever, a, a line that's been pretty disappointing this year. He has been completing passes. He's been a lot more disciplined with the ball, not throwing nearly the picks that he threw last year. Receivers have stepped up. New guy, Zakari Franklin. Pat Bryant, of course, has gotten yeah. better and healthy. So I think there's a good amount of juice to this offense. They don't run the ball that well because the line isn't great. But I don't know. I think all things considered, there's enough juice there. To me, it's defensively. It's how much Purdue was scoring last week and what they're going to need to do. They don't play a lot of good offenses, I think, after the Oregon game next week. So it's a decent enough place, but I think they can feel a little bit more secure in ending up a top 25-ish team if they can be a little bit smarter about pressuring the quarterback, if they can take a few more chances, force a few more turnovers. That's where I think the juice is needed for Illinois. Well, the other thing that I would add to further support your juice argument here, yeah. that they're already in a pretty good spot, Michigan this week be a tight game. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. That's a tight game. Yeah, Oregon... Next week Very on the tough. road. Yep, in Eugene. Probably a loss. But beyond that, you talked about the offenses they face second half of the schedule. Minnesota, Michigan State, on the road at Rutgers and Northwestern to close out the season. Right now, Illinois is 5-1. and one. Yeah, and there's okay. an opportunity for that defense against those offenses. Yeah, Absolutely an opportunity. But realistically, this is a ranked team. This is a pretty good ball club, all things considered. We yeah. could debate the merits of where they need to fix things or not. But it's still a pretty good team relative to what I am seeing on this schedule. Mm -hmm. If Illinois finishes at worst eight and four, Unbelievable. that's a huge, huge step forward for Brett Bielema. Yeah. I think you'd have to be thrilled by that. I agree. I fully agree. Final team. Easy. Michigan. Michigan needs to move huh. to Orange County. Michigan needs to move to Florida. Need Michigan needs to move amongst the groves. They need so much juice because it is Michigan. And what yeah. they have put forth on offense this year is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It really, to follow up a national championship. Yeah. Think about that. You would think this would, you'd have, this would be when you'd have the most juice. And there's been a lot of turnover there with the personnel, right? We, everybody understands that. But to come into this season, not having a quarterback that you feel confident can throw. What are we doing here? I agree. What, like what? What are we even doing here? Jack Tuttle? Sharon Moore this week said that Jack Tuttle's a big game quarterback. In effect. He's been in big games. And we're talking about the portal era, by the portal way. Portal era. Portal. He's seventh year guy, right? <laughs> no offense to Jack Tuttle. He beat Wisconsin I four mean, years ago. I think there was a little offense intended to continue. <laughs> he beat Wisconsin four years ago in the COVID year. Yeah. So that that's the biggest game that I can see that he has actually produced. Threw two touchdowns in that game. Good on him. But to come into this season knowing that those were the three options he had, a former walk-on with a good story, right? Alex yep. Orgy, who was a change of pace running quarterback a year ago, didn't see much of any of him throwing the football a year ago. And then Jack Tuttle, to know that coming into the season, your follow-up campaign, that those are the three guys you had, Yeah, this does not make me think very highly of Sharon Moore and his strategic brilliance when it comes to assembling a roster putting a depth chart together that everybody can feel good about. The defense is fine. Yeah. But there's a lot of strain on that defense. And right there's only, yeah, there's only so much the defense can do if they're on the field constantly. Yeah. There's only so much you can do. 
I don't take anything away from what they have done so far. This is not a defensive problem. This is an offensive problem. This is a quarterback problem. And they absolutely need a huge jolt to try and solve that. Now, maybe Jack Tuttle, well, maybe he will kind of emerge now. If he is indeed the guy moving forward, maybe that confidence, that shot yeah. in the arm for him will turn him into an elevated prospect that we haven't seen the previous six years. Sure. Forgive me if I'm skeptical of that. Yeah. And look, they went into the season wanting Alex Orgy to be the guy, and he didn't even win the job. And hey, look, I understand from a certain standpoint, timing-wise, is Jim Harbaugh going to be the coach? Is he not going to be the coach? How do you sell a quarterback transfer on an uncertain future at head coach in late December, early January? I get that. Uh, and also the portal is open a lot earlier than that as well in December. So you're just deciding, oh, well, do we? You always needed a guy. Always you needed a always guy. needed a guy. You know, and maybe like I, I, I twist myself in a mental pretzel trying to understand the logic here. Yeah. And maybe it was a bit of wishful thinking from a first time full time yeah. head coach that the, these are the guys we want to roll with the guys we have. Davis Warren. Yeah. There, there was a fair amount of returning production this season, right? I mean, yeah. they brought back Donovan Edwards and like we could go down the list. There was a lot that was back from a year ago, a lot that left, but enough coming back that it should feel better than it's felt so far this year. So I, I don't know if it was wishful thinking. I don't know if it was just straight up talent misevaluation. I, somebody in the Michigan universe is going to figure out what the root cause of this was. There was a lot going on there. I, it was a bit of a whirlwind trying to follow it from afar. So I can only imagine what it was like on the inside, but it's just a huge miss. And if Jack Tuttle is not the guy, there are going to be huge questions for Sharon Moore to answer this offseason. Yeah, and why it, you have a freshman quarterback in Jaden Davis, why do you stick around if this is what right, this staff yeah. is doing at quarterback? If this is the system they're running, if this is how they're developing quarterbacks to be ready, you pull Alex Orgy however many drives into the Washington game, the message there is, we don't believe he can develop into something acceptable. We're yeah. not going to give him the time to take these lumps and sort of build up the calluses to become a good quarterback because we don't believe. And so I don't know, man, that's real tough. They need, I, I don't know if there's a juice prescription that can be filled this year. I think again, they need to move to Florida. They need to move to orange County. They, they need, need to move to where the groves are like, why didn't I not have Will Rogers this year? Uh, I don't know. Just okay. whatever the replacement level suitable transfer quarterback starter is that. I don't know. They, they need juice and droves. Season's not over. They can win in a very specific way, but I don't know. It seems they need them. They need to start mainlining Celsius or yeah. something. Yeah. Something that could give them the necessary Vitamin jolt yeah. to, to, to revitalize this passing attack. And, and we're not talking turn it into Texas, Dan. No. Right. I mean, we're talking turn it into Iowa. To Jake Rudock, Michigan. We're yeah. turning Jake Rudock, Michigan. Yeah. It does not need to be a high-flying passing offense. It wasn't last year, and they won the national championship. Yeah. But they they need to provide some sort of second pitch because right now it's just too easy for defenses to know what's coming and to figure out how to stop it. All right. Let's give ourselves a jolt of calories. Yeah. Frida's in Evanston, downtown Evanston, not far from Ryan Field, not terribly far from the Temp Stadium on the lake. Yep. Mexican influence. You know I love that with my breakfast. What's the order? Do you remember, maybe, maybe not, you've lived a very rough life since then, Ty. What are you doing at Frida's? I am going to get a little bit dangerous here. Here he is. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I like myself a good hash. Of course. Going on a chorizo hash here. For $17.99, you get chorizo, obviously. Black beans, corn, Frida's potatoes, which, by the way, are outstanding. I remember them yes. vividly. Chili poblano, mixed cheese, sautéed in guadillo sauce. Guajillo. Guajillo and yeah. topped with sour cream and guacamole served with cornbread. That, my friend, is a full day <laughs> commitment. That is a full day commitment. I am excited to eat my chorizo hash, mm -hmm. go back to your place, yeah. sit on the couch, watch football, and maybe pollute the air. Yeah. Maybe pollute it. We'll see. Hopefully not. But just want to give you that forewarning that it's a possibility if I'm going chorizo hash. Okay, so this is my order normally, and this is my order with you. We're doubling up. We're in the same boat. It will absolutely plant you on the couch. I would go tortillas instead of cornbread. I think it fits a little bit better with Fine. the order. Fine. This is a meal, and we've all been there, 
where you eat half of it and you're like, a smart person would stop at this point. It is very filling. I am full. Uh, there's no reason to continue here. I am satisfied. Everything is going great. But you feel that pull, right? Yeah. You feel in your in your loins, in your heart, in your mouth, whatever. You're just like, I want more of... It's almost like a guilt, right? You kind of... It's like, I'm here now. I'm in the moment. When in Rome, Yes. I want to continue this quest. Yeah. Right. There's, there's a, a certain amount of energy involved where you can't help your fork, but to dig back into the crispy potatoes and chorizo and eggs and the whole beautiful plate in front of you. And so this is the order. This is perfect. And it's a great breakfast. And I recommend everybody go there and maybe take a few miles, maybe walk three to seven miles afterwards and you'll be thrilled. It was a really good meal. We were there last time. So I'd love to go back. And certainly if you were going to be in the Evanston area yeah. celebrating this regal occasion, watching the final game this year in the portable stadium against Wisconsin. Yeah. It's a, it's a big game with Wisconsin coming to town. Maybe you're coming from out of town to, tr- uh, to cheer on the Badgers. Uh, check out Frida's. They do Hit Frida's. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you, everybody, for hitting Big Ten Breakfast. My name is Dan. That is Ty. Enjoy what looks to be a beautiful Saturday outside. Oh, perfect. Perfect. We'll see you soon.